Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School back down here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom. What I want to do today is I want to kind of touch on the five C's. I want to kind of update that video a little bit and update my mentality on things a little bit so that you have a better understanding of this 5C kit. I noticed that my buddy Sean Kelly did a video this past weekend on a 5C's minimalist kit. He called it a minimalist kit but it was basically the five C's. Same five C's that I created back in 2008. And those components within that five C's are really what matters, how you set that up. And so what I wanna discuss with you is a minimal kit in my mind, and everybody does things different. So because I say something different than someone else, doesn't necessarily mean they're wrong, it means their mentality is different than mine. And if you understand my logic and you understand my mentality, then you'll Say, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. If you think it's a bunch of bunk, then you won't do that. So I'll leave that up to you. The first concept I want you to understand with this though is pocket carry, okay? Those five items that we're gonna put in that minimalist kit or those five minimum items. And remember that the five C's was never ever meant to be, I'm only gonna carry five items into the woods. It was five categories of items that I'm going to base my survival kit around. So remember that, five categories. Now you can pare that all the way down to one item for each category if that's what you want for a minimalized kit, except for one category. And we'll talk about that in a minute because it requires more than one item to be effective in an emergency scenario. And that's kind of what I wanna push across today. But let's first talk about this pocket carry because it will play into these five selected items in just a minute, or these five categories that we're filling in just a minute for an emergency kit. And this is not a kit that we're going to put together and go out and camp purposely. If we're going out to camp with purpose, or we're going out to bushcraft, or we're going out to hunt or fish or mushroom hunt, or whatever it is we're doing, we're taking our camping gear. This is, I'm going out for a day on a day hike on a long trail somewhere, and if something happens that I get injured, I get lost, vehicle runs out of gas, four-wheeler gets a flat tire, whatever the case may be that causes me to have to spend a night there, I can do it semi-comfortably and it becomes inconvenient camping at that point and not survival because I'm not going to be at risk of jeopardizing my body's core temperature. Now, back to this pocket carry. There's three things that I put in my pocket every single day when I get up in the morning. And it's very simple. I don't like my pockets loaded down with crap. One piece of paracord utility line. I covered this in my cordage management system video. You can go back and look at that because we're gonna talk a little bit about that in this setup that I've got in front of me on the table here. But I carry one of those in my pocket. It's about six feet long. So I've always got a piece of cordage for the emergency boot lace for an emergency belt, to strap over outerwear to hold in body heat, to carry something off the camp, to carry firewood back to camp, to hang my pack up on a tree. Lots and lots of uses for that piece of cordage, but in the end, it's one emergency piece of cordage I have. I always have a Bic lighter in my pocket with a small roll of one inch duct tape around the lighter. I don't get carried away and put 40 things on this lighter as a fire starting kit. This lighter is a fire starting kit. It has instant flame, that's instant gratification. That is a fire starting kit. Again, like was said in Sean's video, I can rescue this thing in seconds if it gets soaking wet or submerged underwater and it will float if it falls into water. It's not going to sink to the bottom of the lake or the creek or wherever the case may be. The duct tape is highly flammable. I can use it to extend that flame because this is a resource and the fuel inside is a resource. So being able to extend that flame by lighting the duct tape and letting it burn gives me an extra resource on the same thing. It doesn't take up any more room in my pocket, but it allows me to extend that resource. The third thing I keep in my pocket every day is an SAK. This one is an Outrider. Sometimes I carry the Ranger Grip 79 or 78, I can't remember which one it is. It's the one with the non-serrated blade, the OD green one that we carry on our website. I carry that one a lot of the time, but I carry the Outrider a lot because it employs a pair of scissors in the kit as well, which I think is important for management of hygiene. 
And you also have obviously a toothpick and you have the tweezers, again, hygiene items, but it gives you an extra blade and it gives you a small saw that can be used for cutting down small limbs and things like that if needs be. And that's always in my pocket. So those three things give me a lot of power, but they don't give me the ultimate power I would need in an emergency scenario with a bare minimum kit. So now let's discuss why I selected the five things or the five categories, what I selected to put in them and why, and why one of them takes a little bit more than one thing to make it viable. And then we'll look at this thing and say, okay, this is a minimal kit and this is why. So stay with me guys. Okay, so getting down to the bare bones here, and we're talking about, you know, these are five items. If I could only carry, you know, a very minimalized amount of stuff, this is what I'm gonna choose. Remember what I have in my pockets already. That's important to understand. If you're walking out in the woods naked and afraid, or you think somebody's gonna steal your pants, then you really got a problem. You should have some things in your pockets that we talked about already. You could even put a button compass or pocket compass in your pocket if you thought it was necessary. All right, so five things. First of all, going through the five C's, we'll talk about cutting tools. I choose a full tang belt knife of some kind. This one happens to be a Moore Garberg. It's got a little over a four inch blade on it, but it is full tang. Now, the reason I choose that is because I'm never going to rely on my SAK to process a lot of firewood if that's what I have to do. Obviously, I'm not carrying a saw other than that little one on the SAK. I'm not carrying an axe, I'm not carrying a wedge. So I'm really relying on this knife to do all of the work to create a fire. And if I'm planning on using a fire to boil water, there's no doubt I'm gonna to try to build one. So I'm not going to try to manage that with an SAK. And if I already have one in my pocket, then I can afford to have a belt knife in my emergency kit. All right, so full tang belt knife. Any brand, any make, doesn't matter. There's certain criteria that knife has to meet for a basic level class here at the school, but it doesn't necessarily have to be any certain brand to meet those criteria. That's a big misconception on the internet is that I'm trying to sell gear by forcing people to bring certain things to a basic class. I'm trying to pe force people to bring items that meet a certain criteria level so that they are multifunctional. It doesn't really matter what brand they are as long as they meet those criteria. Now, number two, ferrocerium rod. Again, it's wrapped with duct tape as well. It does have a striker built into it that's made of tungsten steel. If it didn't have one, that's fine. I have the 90 degree spine on my knife, it doesn't matter. However, this gives me a secondary fire starting device, again, to extend the main fire starting resource I have, which is my cigarette lighter that is in my pocket. So it doesn't need to be in this kit because I have one in my pocket. So I'm gonna choose something else that can last longer than that in this kit, which is a ferrocerium rod. Container. Always gonna need a container to carry water over distance, to be able to boil water for disinfection. And again, with a small kit like this, you're planning to do that. You're planning to boil water. So if you're planning to do that, and I said some of these items were more than one, I only, I said one of these items is more than one, excuse me, two of these items are more than one, because our container should always have a nesting vessel. The reason for that is it takes up no more room really in the kit, but it then allows me to, number one, boil, dump to cool, boil again. While I'm drinking, I'm boiling, so I'm killing two birds at one stone and I'm losing any time that way. It also allows me other things like a chamber I can use to signal for rescue if I need to, and it gives me a charring chamber to again extend my fire resources in an emergency. So without taking any more room in the kit, I'm adding something that adds much more versatility to this kit than it would be with the bottle alone, okay? Now, the shelter element. This is where I think it's important to understand, all right? A good night's sleep and controlling that body core temperature is the most important thing that you're going to want to achieve once you've gotten past things like self-aid, all right? You're gonna want a good shelter system. Now. The clothing on your back is your first line of defense. You should be dressed for the weather and you should have something with you really to battle any inclement weather that may occur in your bioregion during the season you're operating in and things like that. But what I would tell you is this, any shelter system really needs to have three components. It needs to have something you can sleep in, something you can sleep on, and something you can sleep under. So if you're only carrying an emergency space blanket, 
all you have is something to sleep under. Nobody goes in their house at night, lays down on the concrete or wood floor, and goes to sleep. You've got something to sleep on, and you've got something to sleep under. Sleeping on something battles conduction from the ground. Sleeping inside something traps body core temperature. And sleeping under something protects you from the exterior elements outside. You need those three elements. Do they have to be huge? Absolutely not. So, something to sleep in. An emergency bivy. Doesn't have to be Pathfinder branded. This is a Tyvek bivy. It's reflective on the inside, so it traps body heat. So if I'm wearing minimal clothing, this thing is good to about 40 degrees in normal clothing. So I've got something at least down to 40 degrees, even if I don't have fire, that I can sleep in as part of my shelter system, as long as I can battle conduction. That's the next step. The conduction portion of this can be as simple as a six mil trash bag. A six mil trash bag that's filled with debris or leaves to contain them easily. And again, I'm not planning on having things that I can construct a bed to put leaves inside of and hold them in place. Maybe I get lucky and find some logs, but I'm not gonna chance that. I'm taking this. And then if I do happen to find all that good stuff, I still have this as a ground sheet that's gonna protect me from getting wet or any dampness from seeping through into my shelter system itself. So, trash bag, six mil. The third element is your emergency space blanket. Now, your emergency space blanket can be a five by seven, any brand you want, as long as it is a durable space blanket. But the reflective portion of that space blanket is what enables you to manipulate that fire to get convective heat or to trap your own body heat by making a very small enclosed shelter with this blanket. So when you combine this blanket with this bivy, now I have two ways I can trap heat if I need to. I have something I can sleep on, something I can sleep in, and something I can sleep under. So I've built a viable shelter system. Now, stakes. Yes, I'm gonna carry stakes. Just like Sean was talking about in his video, I'm not gonna carve stakes if I don't have to. If I want a shelter and I want it up now, I want the stakes available to me. Now, my rapid deployment ridge line, same thing. The only difference is I put the third prussic loop on here for a tackling device, so I don't have to tie any knots. And I also have a stick on here at the end of my bowling knot on the tail so that when I do that running bowling around the object, I can just drop this stick through it and I don't have to waste a tent stick. And I don't have to hope I can find a stick in a rush in the rain or in a driving rain. All I have to do is take that stick and drop it in there and I'm done. And it's the same length as my rapid deployment ridge line, so it's not taking up any more room in my pack and it weighs almost nothing because it's a dry stick. Simple, right? I choose to carry six things. The reason I choose to carry six is because one of them becomes a fire starting device, which puts me automatically down to five, all right? I have four corners on my tarp, so I'm gonna want at least four, and then one of them is in case I break a stake on the fly or something like that, I have a spare stake, or I can use two of these stakes on my guy lines where my prussic loops are and have four stakes for my shelter if I'm not gonna use one to make a fire. So there's a reason for this many stakes, okay? Six stakes is the minimum I would carry. They don't weigh very much, they're ABS plastics, but they burn, gives you an advantage for fire. Cordage, all right, now, there are four pieces of utility line here that are six feet long, and they are laying here on top of the shelter bag, and there's 100 feet of number 36 bank line. If I need cordage to tie, lash, and bind, other than a shelter, this stuff right here is the ticket. It's, I can carry more of it with less space and less weight, and it's more versatile in my mind than paracord, and it definitely does a better job of lashing and binding things than paracord does. However, I've got these four lines as extensions, and if you go look at my video on the cordage management system, all four corners of my tarp already have one of these lines on them. And the bowling loop at the end of that line is just big enough that when I pass it through in Lark's Head fashion, there's enough room left of the loop to shove a stake in. So number one, it gives me a stake loop already on the tarp. And number two, it gives me a way to pull that tarp out and fly the tarp. Carrying stakes and carrying a tarp is great. 
but it gives me no versatility with the tarp as far as how I'm going to set the thing up. Because if I don't want the thing on the ground, maybe it's a hot weather day and I want total breeze under there. I want to fly all four corners of that tarp. I'm either going to put bank line on there at that point or more paracord that I'm carrying, or I'm already going to have it available. And if I'm trying to just put a rain shelter up really quick and I've already got four lines on there, boom, 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 I'm done. Simple, simple. That's what I'm trying to achieve. This entire kit weighs about four and a half, five pounds dry without water, okay? So you're not carrying a lot of weight and all of it, truly speaking, can be laid out on a table. You could put the trash bag on the bottom, the shelter inside of that, pull this bivy out of the bag and stretch it out inside there, put the stakes in, the ropes in for that, keep that separate maybe, roll everything up into a nice tight little package and put it in your kit. And then the only thing that you really have extra in your kit that's not in one package is a water bottle and cup, a knife that you probably would have on your belt anyway, this, and a roll of cordage. This is easy enough to carry just about anywhere. Haversack, whatever you have, this will probably carry it. This is on your belt. You've got what's in your pockets. You're pretty well set for a minimal kit that will actually do the job it's supposed to do in an emergency and not cause you to sit out there and have to build a giant fire all night to stay warm or shiver all night because you can't build a fire because you don't have anything to keep you warm. These elements that trap heat are the key to that. And in an emergency scenario, you don't know that you're going to be able to build a fire, so you have to be able to manage that scenario as well. Vivi, trash bag, space blanket. All laid out on the table. Other components are laying right down here for that kit. Now, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to put this in a surplus butt pack. So you want that entire package to be about that long. Piece of cake. And then we'll easily, easily go that small. So I'm going to fold this over to the middle. And I'm going to fold the other side over to the middle. Kind of even those up, see where I'm at. It's going to be about right. Cut those ropes inside and fold this over to keep everything neat and tidy. Now I've got my extra ropes. My ridge line is going to be the last thing I put in because it'll be the first thing I want out, right? Last in, first out. My extension can go inside here. My tent stakes can go inside here. I'm going to keep one of those extension lines out to use it to lash everything together. So my ridge line's out, my extensions are out. Now I'm folding all of this to the middle, starting on the end, offsetting my stakes, fold everything into a small package, and I'm gonna to begin to roll this up. Pulling everything to the middle as I go to give everything where it needs to be. So when I get to the end of this, I'm gonna fold the last bit of it over, make sure all my lines are tucked in. In this envelope right here, rapid deployment ridge line, finish rolling it up. All right, remember that I still have a piece of cordage left over here that I left out. I'm just gonna take that piece, bring it around in a loop, Put a lark set in there, but one side through one direction of that lark set, but one side through the other direction of that lark set, just like this. Crank it all down on itself, get it centered up, and zip it down just like that. And that's going to give us everything we need. Let's tie a nice, neat bow right there. So everything we have now is in a nice, neat package. We have a military surplus butt pack here. We have a water bottle carrier on that for a water bottle and cup. 
And we have an external pouch right here. We can put our cordage in, we can put our ferro rod in there. Anything else that we might want to put in there, a headlamp if we wanted to, would easily fit in there. A compass would easily fit in there. A notebook, a pen would easily fit in there. There's plenty of extra room here that we could tuck things into if we wanted to. But our bare bones kit fits in this very easily into a nice, small, neat package. Okay, guys, listen, I appreciate you joining me out here today at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom for this video on kind of a five C's minimal type kit. And you know, bear in mind that I spend about 120 days a year teaching. So 120 days a year, I'm out in the woods with students. Not all of them overnight, many of them overnight. So I set up shelters a lot. I watch people set up shelters a lot. I use gear a lot. I watch people use gear a lot. And over time, because I've been doing this for a long time now, you know, probably six, 700 students a year, I learn what works best and I see what works best and what doesn't work best. And when I develop things in the Pathfinder system, I'm trying to always upgrade things to give you the best knowledge and also give you the most effective way of doing things. So I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.